everyone. Welcome back to my IG Live. We are on the next episode of my series, Paving the Way. And my guest for today is Jada Gossett. Her Instagram handle is Jada Solo Dance. And I'm so excited for her to speak about her experience as an adult figure skater and her experience in wanting to push change in terms of diversity and inclusion in our sport. So I'm so happy and excited to have her join in. Yes, third, third time is the charm. I believe in miracles when you believe. So everybody, this is Jada. Hello. I am so happy to have you. So we were having Hi. a little bit of technical difficulty. Yes. How are you today? I'm doing great. Um, I'm losing faith in Androids because I really do love my Samsung Galaxy, but it really failed me. I'm on my iPad now, so, you know. <laughs> Perfect. Well, without further ado, I just wanted to thank you so much for joining and, you know, for talking to me for the past, you know, couple of weeks mm -hmm. about just wanting to make sure that the next generation of figure skaters feels part of a community that is diverse, that is inclusive. And I love that you have a perspective from the adult figure skating perspective, because that's another um, area that we're trying to push inclusion in, right? Because adults just maybe like five, six years ago, they weren't necessarily feeling comfortable to be at the ice rink sometimes too, because most majority of figure skaters are young, right? So that's another topic that um, kind of ties into everything that we're discussing. So I would like to ask you, would you be able to speak about, you know, how you got into figure skating or what was your life like before figure skating? Yeah, so um, I never really thought about ice skating before two years ago, let me be real with you. I watched the Olympics every four years. Um, didn't really know anybody and we have a bunch of rinks and so maybe I went on a couple of field trips as a kid but figure skating was never on the radar you know as a kid I was really a dancer I was really in all of the dance studios my mom got me into dance classes for ballet and tap um at like four or five years old that was at a studio right down the street from my house so it was perfect I wasn't even in school yet so literally after you know after she would come home from work or on the, like Saturday mornings, I would just go to dance class. Um, and that kind of persisted over the course of, I mean, even now, I still occasionally take dance classes, but I haven't like been in a studio long enough. Like I think the longest I was ever at one studio was one year. Um, and there's a lot to choose from. Um, but you know, it's it was interesting though, because like as a kid, um, like I wasn't really athletic, you know, like dance was my, my, my sport, I guess. Um, but even as that it wasn't, I, I guess because like every studio is, a, is their own family that like, it was really hard for me to kind of integrate myself, especially because I kept hopping around because, you know, every time I tried to, you know, even if I liked the dancing, like half, of, half of being a kid is being interactive with other kids. So when you're, you know, you don't find yourself meshing with the other kids and you're just kind of like, well, all right, I guess I'll try something else. <laughs> So did you try something else after Dan? Um, for a long time, no. I think I really just, I, you know, I really, I was a straight A kid, straight A student. So I, I did schoolwork all day, every day. Um, and then I discovered YouTube, of course. Um, <laughs> so, but other than that, no, I, I was not an active kid, pretty much outside of dance, like at at all. I mean, I was classic couch potato. You know, I watched all of the television, all of the YouTube. I was really into computers, so I did all of the online learning stuff. You know, I did online mm -hmm. learning before it was like Vogue. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I really can't say that I was into any kind of physical activity um, as much as I am now as an adult, like with figure skating. Like it, it kind of just swallowed me up when I wasn't even expecting it. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I personally, when I think about figure skating, it's one of the most um, kind of intense workouts when people finish a couple laps for hours on end without having done any jumps or spins, they feel how sore they are. So my question to you is, so how did you get involved in skating then if you were so removed from any physical activity? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So back in the day of college. So for everyone who doesn't know me here, I graduated college about a year ago. Um, I was trying to be a Philly blogger, you know, kind of like just blogging about things you can do in the city. And so Lyft, um, the rideshare company, had a program for influencers um, where we basically posted about stuff that was happening in the city and just kind of tag it Lyft something, whatever the hashtag was. Um, and then one of our rewards was actually um, uh, all included ticket, the rental skates and the admission to uh, the Blue Cross River Rink um, in Philly uh, for completely free. And so I dragged one of my friends with me to the rink. It was like, hey, we sh this, this should be fun. We're juniors in college and, you know, life is awful. Um, so let's just let's just see how it goes. And, and, you know, we went and it was a really fun time. It was a good hour and a half of us, you know, trying not to fall on rental skates because everyone in this room can probably tell you that rental skates are not the best skates to, <laughs> to use. Uh, you're learning how to skate. I don't know why we give people those skates. I digress. Um, so after that, that initial session, I could not stop thinking about it. I literally in my mind was like, oh, my God, that was so fun. I had like this invigoration. Like, I want to do that again. Um, so I kind of yeah. convinced my boyfriend, like, hey, go figure skating. That'd be cool. That'd be like, well, look, ice skating around the rink. It'd be cu a cute date idea. So mm -hmm. we did. And again, it was really fun. I ended up lapping him by the end of the session so wow like, this is like something i think we should we should try to do so i spent probably the, the entire night the, the next day looking up like how do i get started in figure skating because i'm like i don't i don't know how you do this no one's mm -hmm. no one it's like a guide on like how do you start um so i found out that there were a couple of learn to skate um programs in the city one was actually down the street from my school at Penn's. um rank university of penn so i registered just i just did it i didn't i didn't research a whole lot i was like let's do it now and we'll research later we just have to start yeah um and so 160 dollars later i ended up in a learn skate with with actually specifically adults i was really surprised that i was in a class of all adults mm -hmm. um which was really heartwarming because you know i wasn't the oldest person in in the lesson um and you know after the first lesson i realized you know what these rental skates they're not working i i can't we can't do this my feet were hurting i couldn't swizzle i'm like i know i can do these things so let's just let's just go get a pair so i went to um philadelphia skating club in ardmore was like hey fran i need skates i don't <laughs> i just need skates. so i got <laughs> artistes um for another $180. Uh, uh -huh. so we, we're already about $400 in and it's been like four days. Um, <laughs> and after six weeks of those learn skate lessons, I ended up passing adult one and two. Like, just like that. <laughs> You're like, bye. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so then I was like, well, I want to keep going. So the rink of that now, the stadium in Havertown. Town. Um, they also had a learn skate session going on. So, of course, I registered for that one, too. Um, and about three weeks into that, I'm like, this is this is cool, but we're just doing crossovers for three weeks. So I'm like, hey, uh, figure skating director, I want to take private lessons. I kind of want to do solo dance. We'll get to why it's solo dance in a while. Um, I want to do solo dance. It, any help? And she was, she's like, well, yeah, this coach could help you. He's a he's a dancer. I was like, okay, cool. So at some point, I was in uh, private lessons and uh, group lessons at the same time. And so by the end of the that last learn skate group, I was like, nope, we're just done with the group lessons. We're just gonna do the the private lesson thing and see where that takes us. Um, and I've just been going ever since. That's <laughs> awesome. I think that is so fun how just one free trial really got you hooked. And it kind of mm -hmm. goes to show that like, um, I think some people don't realize that just going to a public session is actually a gift. I think that's something that people take for granted because, you know, we get all this ice time as figure skaters, we get all this ice time and we get public sessions and public sessions are too crowded. But when you hear a story like yours, it's like, no, that public session, that one ticket meant the world to me. And it turned my life upside down 
in the most positive, beautiful way possible. So from that point, in terms of you picking up those private lessons, tell us more about how this Jada solo dance all started and your interest in specifically ice dancing. Yeah. So, of course, 2018, when I started, was the year of the most recent Winter Olympics. Um, I really wasn't even following the Olympics that year just because it was such a busy time for school. But um, after... You know, after that that one public session, I was like, I need to, like, just be consumed with skating for a while, you know? Um, So I'm like, let's watch the Olympics. And so I didn't know anybody on the field when I turned on NBC and was like, okay, sure, we'll watch the skating thing. Don't didn't know anybody. But I did notice that Maya and Alex Shibutani were, they just caught my eye. I didn't know what ice dancing was, Mm -hmm. you know? I was like, what's the difference? Isn't that just, like, they're just not jumping. Is that weird? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but as the, the more I kind of got into, like, the researching of, like, what is, was ice dancing? I'm like, this is kind of cool. Um, and so, really, truly, I wanted to do ice dance um, with a partner. But then I was like, let's be real. I'm, like, not the most social person. Like, I like people, but I don't like them touching me. That just was, like, a thing in my brain. And I'm like... Also, I'm not really cool with the whole idea of like you need a man. Like in the in the in the guidebook, it's in the rule book, it's man and ladies steps for for ice dance. So I'm like, I'm not really cool with the idea of like needing a man in order to skate. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's just against my whole thing. <laughs> um, so I'm like, well, can I do it without a partner? And then I discovered solo dance, and I'm like, yes, I I want to do that. Can we do that? Um, and of course my coach, um, he's a two time former Olympian. So, you know, he, he's been doing ice dance for, for, for decades. Right. Um, but he was really, you know, he has some solo dance, um, students, uh, of adult and also, uh, kids. So he was all for it. Like, yeah, first lesson we were learning Dutch waltz, um, which was really fun to me who I couldn't even really skate backwards that well. I think I may have had backward crossovers when we started, um, but I had, you know, forward crossovers and that's really all you need for Dutch waltz anyway. So we learned and honestly, I guess I picked it up so quickly that I guess quickly for someone who had just started skating like three months ago. Right. Um, he was like, Hey, what do you think about testing? And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but sure, we can test. What do I have to do? It's like, well, you know, you pay the club some money and then, you know, show up in a dress and then you dance in front of some judges and then they tell you, hey, you passed. And I go, okay, sure. I mean, why not? Um, so we ended up testing Dutch Waltz and um, Canasta Tango. And again, this is the timeline for this is about seven months from when I, when I started skating, right? Um, so within seven months, I had gone from, I can only kind of skate on rental skates to, I have tested two solo dances. And that's kind of been like the real trajectory, you know? Um, and I've just kind of been going at this, where I, as long as I'm having fun with it, I don't really care about like the testing and the competitions and whatever, you know, it's really about honestly, the, the Instagram community. They're kind of the reason why I'm so here. Sometimes I, um, like, I love the that. Community on Instagram, so like everyone is so awesome. I get comments yes. and DMs every day from people who are like, Oh my God, I thought I was like the only one. And you know, truth be told, we're never on, like the only ones, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just great to be able to watch people's progress and, and to find people that kind of look not necessarily like you, but to watch other people in your age group, like doing these things. Cause it's easy to like, you know, watch a 10 year old get an axle without really trying. And then you've been working on your axle for, you know, years. Um, yeah. <laughs> not that I do. Axles, not like, let's pretend, yeah. let's not pretend that, uh, this is this is solo dancing here, but you get you get the the point, right? Um, one hundred percent. Yeah. What I was saying, I think I said it in the intro because you know we did the intro three times, <laughs> but yeah. I was talking about specifically inclusion, not just diversity, but we're passionate about inclusion in general. And so what I was saying before is that maybe like five six years ago, 
there are a lot of adult figure skaters that felt uncomfortable to be at the rink, right? And there was this stigma around, you know, if you are like, it's so crazy how 24, 25, 26 year olds are called veterans on television. They think that they're old grandparents. And I, I've been such a huge proponent to switch that. I, you know, for myself, I'm 27 years old. And in the grand scheme of things, my mindset has shifted so much, but it took a lot of work because it was embedded into our everyday training when we were younger, that like 16, you're already old, 17, you're already old. If you don't get a double axle by 13, you're, it's too late. I've been so the opposite and I've tried to push so hard and having people like you, role models like you show that when you were in college, when you were busy, skating was your outlet. That is phenomenal. So I applaud you. And I'm so happy that you're able to discover that you didn't have to also go towards the axle path. You didn't have to go down mm-hmm. the rabbit hole of competing either. You found your own voice yeah. and you found your own way of making yourself feel good. And not only that, you make other people feel good. I see those comments. I see all of those comments that people, you know, are applauding you for, and you deserve all of that. And so does everybody else in the adult figure skating community. So look at, they're all like putting hearts and stuff. That's all for you. And I'm so happy that, um, in a way, honestly, your Instagram handle, I, somebody in the comment section goes, I didn't know solo dance existed until I saw your Instagram handle. So can you actually describe the journey on how you discovered that? Remember, you came up with a name. You told okay. me about it. Well, yeah. Okay. So um, my handle used to be Jada, just Jada Skates um, because I wasn't sure if I wanted to just stay in solo dance or not. I knew I wanted to do it because, um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not crazy about the idea of relying on someone else to in order for me to skate. Um, and that was the ultimate thing. I want to skate. So I did a lot of researching on U.S. figure skating's old version of the website um, to discover um, that this thing called solo dance existed. And for those of you who don't know, I'll give you a very brief overview. So essentially, if Ice Dance is 100% completed with two people, a man and a woman, we'll, we can get we can dive down into the, the connotations of all that, but we're not going to right now. Um, <laughs> So, you comp- when, when you compete, there is a pattern dance or rhythm dance if you're higher level, and there's also a free dance. So, what that looks like in the solo department is you go, um, you do the pattern dance by yourself, and it's usually you're following your gender steps. So, if you're a lady, then you will do the lady steps like you'll test with the lady steps you'll compete with the lady steps um unless there's like something that is not possible um (laughs) because there are some dances higher up in like the golds and internationals that you can't quite do the exact same steps as as a lady um and then Mm -hmm. for the the for the the free the solo free dance it's very similar to what they're doing they're trying to make them more parallel with each other um the, the the paired um Free, the free dance and the solo, the solo free dance. Um, but you're, it's kind of like uh, a free program, but just without jumps and like crazy spins. There are limitations, and you know, like you can't do um, like illusions. Um, you know, like there's, you can't do it any kind of jumping, uh, really. Like no more jumps than like a half jump in the in your footwork. So things like that. Um, but I realized that more and more, I solo dance really was kind of my, it kind of catapulted me to where I am. So I kind of wanted to, to have that be more of an essence of what my account is going to be. Because I, I, I was looking for solo dance resources since I started. And I was like, there, there's nothing um, besides, you know, one page on the U.S. Figure Skating's website. Like, there's, there was, like, a few uh, recordings of people's tests on on YouTube, but other than that, like, solo dance doesn't exist, and so, like, one of my things is that I really want to show that, you know, you can skate, um, and not necessarily have to do all of the crazy things that you see, um, you know, the, the single skaters doing, like, there's so many different ways, like, I know people who, you know, did synchro and, and solo dance, um, people who went solo dance and then went up to, 
you know, get a partner. So now they're doing partner dance. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's a good gateway, you know, for a lot of people. And also a lot of adults end up doing um, solo dance after doing singles because they, their bodies just can't handle the, the rigor um, from all the jumps and the spins. So um, it's, I think it's, it's definitely an underappreciated um, discipline, but I think that it is growing um, as far as like notoriety is concerned. So I'm hoping that within the next year or two, we can really get some, some more people involved. Yeah, totally. I noticed that a lot of figure skaters from my generation Um, They were a few years younger than me, but as they started to get older, um, majority of people kind of fall out of the sport in high school because everything becomes too competitive. Um, A lot happens in which um, they don't feel like they're, you know, good enough or finances. So a lot of times in high school, people start to fall off just because they're discouraged. I felt that way. I'm not speaking on behalf of everybody, but I felt that way. And I noticed people around me feel that way because when we had conversations, that's exactly what was happening in our minds, but we never publicized it outwardly. Um, But that is a huge issue. And I noticed that a lot of people took the solo dance route and because of injuries from jumping or because they felt as though, you know, um, IJS competitions in the solo singles world was too competitive. So they coupled it. They did both. Um, IJS singles and they did um, solo dance and that just gave more opportunity. Um, They ended up becoming like national champions in their solo dance division and it gave a new perspective and avenue to finding success in the sport. Obviously success is very determined on your own personal growth and your own progress and what you expect of yourself but definitely when you're thinking about success in the sport People equate it to medals. People equate it to having titles. And there shouldn't just be, in my personal opinion, one Olympic champion. I think it's so beautiful now they're having a little bit more variety of opportunities, like even with their team event. That's a huge shift. So I'm looking for more of that type of change. Um, And I also noticed that there's a lot of other disciplines, just like you. I hope there's more people that start developing maybe like uh, a theater you know, ice theater, Instagram page, or uh, synchronization, um, synchronized skating, Instagram pages, uh, and just being able to share all the gifts that figure skating has to offer that not is not necessarily on the forefront of uh, publicity. So I think it's up to us as Uh, role models in this sport and just people who are passionate and love figure skating to share all the beautiful things about it. So I thank you so much for bringing up all these important um, disciplines to mind because you're absolutely right. There needs to be more um, kind of like exposure to all of this. And you are definitely a big proponent of pushing um, solo dance. So I love that. (laughs) Yeah, they're they're trying. I don't. I don't, I know a lot of people who you know have already complained about uh, use figure skating's current iteration of their website, but I hate it um, <laughs> because one, you can't really find solo dance information, which really bothers me because like before I was ever a member at a club, that's how I discovered it. So mm-hmm. I feel like making it harder to find solid and concrete information about it is only going to hurt like people's discovery of being like oh maybe I can actually figure skate and not just think that they have to you know be this you know doubles and triples master um, yeah but most definitely. we can only you know advocate for the things that we want and hope that those things change well the funny thing is um some people don't know but I work for yes figure skating as a membership growth consultant so this is a huge part of conversations just the website in general because I say as a coach, it's not a pleasant experience. And the people in my uh, <laughs> meetings, we know. But it's so interesting because it's a, a, such a new platform that every single uh, suggestion that we give, it, it is a slow and steady you know, race in terms of being able to fix things. Um, but I'm glad to see that certain changes are happening. But I'll definitely... I'm going to make that note of it. I'm going to tell the team. Solo dance needs to be... you know a exposed so that people can see it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Um, (laughs) I wanted to ask you a little bit more about, you know, your 
desire to see certain changes since we're talking about U.S. figure skating. Other than the website, what do you think that you would like to see the next generation be able to have that's different from your experience? Um, I think there'd be, it would be great if there was just overall a better way to bridge, you know, like the discovery of skating to taking a learn to skate class to then moving on beyond the learn to skate curriculum. Because like, for me, I did a lot of research, but now I find that a lot of people are asking me questions because I am just this walking encyclopedia of everything U.S. figure skating. So people just kind of ask me. <laughs> But I feel like if it was just a little bit more obvious and if there were more things that were instilled and if there was more support at local rinks and clubs that could take someone who's on a public session to then like, oh, hey, you want to try, you know, these cool group lessons um, and then to move on and go, hey, we have these more advanced group lessons, you know, because like the kids can get freestyle one and so and you, you as an adult. Can, get, can take that class too, but it's really up to the rink for a lot of it to, to, to whether they actually have an adult level of those different kinds of classes. Um, for instance, they do actually have um, ice dance in the Learn to Skate curriculum as a, as a, one, as a class level beyond uh, Basic 6 or Basic 8, whatever they're on now. Mm -hmm. um, so it would really be great to, to have that pipeline a little bit more obvious for newcomers because like for me, I kind of just fell into it, but I know a lot of people need that handholding and it would make a lot more sense. Um, and then also like the funding that goes along with that, you know, it's a lot of, a lot, you know, it's hard. Like figure skating is so expensive. Um, like I know from experience that once I made the jump from learn to skate, to taking private lessons, I spent an astronomically larger amount of money um, mm -hmm. just to have my weekly 30 minute lesson. And I know people who have more lessons than that. And I was like, as a student, like that's not even financially feasible for me. We're just going to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. Freestyle sessions are expensive. So I took public, um, I, I did the public sessions and just practice my ice dance on there very carefully. Um, so it, it, it would make so much sense to have some kind of like just lower cost things for for people to kind of get their feet a little bit wet into, you know, doing it. Besides, like once you finish basic six, oh, well, you know what? Now you got to go pay for a coach because we don't have anything else. And some people don't want to make that jump from spending one hundred and sixty dollars for six weeks lessons to suddenly that's your bill every week. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, like, you know, I have worked in a social sector a lot and I, I've met people who can barely pay their electric bills, who can par barely buy a grocery. So like, how can you expect these people to then like show all this extra money? Like, it's just, it's not fair to ask that of people. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, it, it's background more than anything. And so like, I think if you want to see the sport grow, you need to make it more accessible. 100 percent preach that's exactly what um yeah i'm all about and the beauty of it is that u.s figure skating is working on a program called aspire and this is something that i talked about with jada and i want her to implement it at her rink but like you said it can't come from like just one person because you, the rinks have to take ownership of this and so with my job what i'm able to do is contact skating directors contact uh rink owners and share with them that there's going to be a curriculum actually to basically have a solution to Jada's problem of why are you jumping from learn to skate all the way to private lessons that's tripling or quadrupling the price that somebody has paid, right? And so these Aspire pro programs uh, will basically teach you intro to ice dancing, intro to IJS, intro to theater on ice, intro to synchro, give you all that figure skating has to offer all these different disciplines, create that bridge from learn to skate. And you can feel as though you're still part of a team and a structure. So you don't have to feel like you, the only thing that's possible is private lessons. And so I definitely think that that's something that uh, will definitely help. And especially because you're a board member too of your club. Is that right? Yep. We're, we're going to implement it at your rink and we're going to try to do more of that just around our nation. Um, we've been working on the program for two years 
And so um, the conversations to implement them started in February before COVID-19. Um, but now it, with Brinks reopening, um, it's the perfect time to start that discussion and to really drive this forward more than ever, because I'm with you. I am with you about the accessibility. That's why you and I, we make videos. That's exactly why we make videos. We make videos because we can provide access in an instant basis. Um, yes, so anybody in the United States who's part of a skating rink or a club and you want to learn more about the Spire program, you can reach out to me. Um, if you're interested in learning more about ice dancing, you know, Jada is the walking encyclopedia now that she says <laughs> until I can get U.S. figure skating to help change the structure of the website for to find more solo dance information. But yeah, I agree with you on that completely. Accessibility, accessibility, accessibility. That's the only way. Um, and I hope that, you know, you're able to continue what you're doing because what you're doing is great. And um, I want to also touch on what Jada has done in her you know, free time just to be able to advocate her voice. The reason as to why Jada is on IG Live with me right now is because I noticed how bold and how genuine she was. Um, the reason why I reached out to Jada for this IG Live was because of her comment on US Figure Skating's post um, a couple weeks back. And she offered all of her insight and her feedback to push for diversity and inclusion in skating. And I would love for you to discuss that. And then we can talk about the result. I feel like your voice definitely was yeah. heard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, back in the in the days of uh, Black Squares infiltrating all of your Instagram feeds, uh, U.S. Figure Skating also put one up. And they had this, you know, this very, honestly, disappointing message. Um, and I'm not going to read it. But, you know, as someone who is a diverse skater, um, obviously uh it was really disappointing because you 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 would want that there to be a, a little bit more than just words um especially when you know kind of the behind the scenes of what happens in the sport so um i not only wrote a comment on that post that got actually a lot of attention that i i looked back at it like not that long ago and i'm like there's a lot of likes there okay <laughs> or, um <laughs> also wrote an email that I would love to share with you all. I sent it on June 3rd at 9.43 p.m. to the info at figure skating uh, email address and it goes a little something like this. Um, the subject is what are you doing to improve inclusion in U.S. figure skating? Good evening. I am an active U.S. figure skating adult member with a position as a board member at large at my local club with heavy participation as a spectator and volunteer at major competitions. After reading U.S. figure skating's statement regarding the recent protests in support of the Black Lives Matter movement, I felt dissatisfied as a black member of the organization. In 2020, it is nothing but negligent to not have a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement beyond legal requirements. Furthermore, in such a subjective sport in a diverse nation, it is also negligent to lack proper training to educate staff, members, officials, coaches, boards, and parents about the real dangers of implicit bias and how minorities, especially those identifying as Black and Latinx, have systemically received fewer opportunities than their white or non-Black people of color counterparts. These populations are more likely to be low income, undereducated, and experience extreme hardships in meeting basic needs. By simply stating that you, you allow equal opportunity to those minorities without explicitly offering programs that support them, you do not live up to your code. We would like a definitive action plan for how you envision changing the landscape of figure skating in the U.S. If you need a few ideas, here are some of the things you can do. So this is a bulleted list now, right? <laughs> Post or a nationwide minority council to vet the organization's policies and have a voice at the table for equitable treatment of minorities in the sport. Host a campaign to build a fund for specifically Black and Latinx youth to highly underrepresented populations in the sport. Provide support and promote existing entities such as Figure Skating in Harlem and Diversify Ice Foundation to continue to do, to do work um, on things that you as an organization should be prioritizing and hire a consulting firm to identify racist policies and practices within the organization and how that affects its member-facing services. Beautiful. I love, <laughs> love, love that. 
And I'm just so proud of you, not just taking a public statement for everybody to see, but you you went inside. You went inside and took the initiative to write out those steps and write out exactly what you see needs to be done. And I would like to say that Jade and I are so happy because right before we were prepping for this IG Live, U.S. Figure Skating put out an email. And so the email is titled Diversity and Inclusion Working Group. And so it answered Jada's point, basically. And I'm going to read the middle section. And it goes, on Monday, June 15th, the board of directors supported the formation of a working group that focuses on short-term and long-term diversity and inclusion initiatives for the organization. This working group will consist of a majority of leader members and non-members, along with the select individuals from the board. So they basically asked, if you're willing or wanting to put in any type of feedback, they're really interested. So Jada and I will definitely be writing an email. Even though I'm part of the organization, I definitely want to let them know that what they're doing is really important and that I know that we have such strong advocates for this. And um, if you, any of you out there are also strong advocates, I highly recommend that you email info at usfigureskating.org so that you can show, you know, how much this means to our community. Cause it can't just be from a group of people, um, you know, in like a small sector of skating, it has to be a collective thing where we keep pushing for change. Um, and I think that is really, really important. And I'm just so, so happy that I, I personally, I think that your email definitely it, it you, they heard you. I just want to let you know that they heard you. <laughs> So that is so beautiful. How did you feel about the email when I told you about it? Um, I was very excited because honestly, I, I've i been in figure skating long enough and also kind of catapulted to the inside very quickly to the point where I was a little cynical. Um, I wasn't exactly sure that U.S. figure skating would ever take a jump like that um, just because, you know, it's figure skating is is a legacy sport you know like we we know the, t the type of people that tend to end up being engaged and be successful and so it's really hard to break through with you know diversity um so to read just to read those you know a few sentences about what they're what they've been working on in the background um really does mean a lot even if it is just one step it is one step where they're willing to actually just admit that they don't know that's really what that email tells me is that they don't know how to fix it to to you know basically crowdsource from the, the figure skating community and say hey we don't know what we're doing but we love to hear your voices that means a lot mm -hmm. you know like you mm -hmm. you want you want that to be you want to be able like like the series you want to amplify diverse voices and this is this is the perfect way to do it <laughs> I'm just so thankful. I am so in awe of how confident you are because of your age. And that's mm -hmm. something that's very special, right? And people maybe underestimate people who are younger, which I definitely have, um, have had that pushed on me because I'm young. I can't do this. I can't do that. But I'm more inspired and in awe because what's coming out of your voice is something that is so profound and so powerful um, that we need to have more Jadas in this world. That's what all I'm saying. Like what you're doing <laughs> is beautiful. And it's funny how you've only been skating. Is it exactly two years now? It's a little over two. I started in March of 2018. Let's say two and a half years, but then, you know, quarantine, you didn't get to skate. <laughs> <laughs> But just for you to be in the sport for about two years, it's incredible how you've been wanting to give back from the beginning. For you to be a board member of your club, for you to, you know, draft emails and push for change, mm -hmm. for you to be, you know, an Instagram role model for everyone out there, um, that is phenomenal. And I encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. Uh, Jada and I and a group of other figure skaters have come together to put together a diversity and inclusion group through Zoom 
And I encourage everyone out there to do the same thing. You know, it doesn't have to just come from one place. Um, there could be multiple different Zoom discussions. There could be multiple different avenues of pushing for change because not there's not an one answer. There's not one answer. I think it it takes a whole entire village to make sure that voices are heard. And it takes um, more than just me. You know, this is just one series. And I know that other people are doing multiple series as well to make sure that voices are being heard. And I encourage everyone out there to do the same thing. It doesn't even have to be public. Do it out. Do it at your local rink. If you see somebody that is different from you, but you want to hear about their story, I think it's okay. It's okay to, you know, check in on how they're doing and develop a relationship with them. So Coach Aurora is on here and she said the same thing. She said, you know, it doesn't even matter about skin color. It doesn't matter how they look. It's more so if you see somebody that's alone, right? Go check in on how they're yep. doing. What yep. about you? What advice can you provide for people out there who are, you know, trying to make sure that everybody feels safe in this sport? Honestly, I think, you know, I, I watched Coach Aurora's um, video or the live list she did with you last week, and it also brought me to tears um, because I just thought I had this vision of, like, you know, this poor, this, like, not poor, but, like, this little black girl, like, alone in the rink, doesn't have, you know, a parent that's, like, you know, being, like, skate mom at uh, on the edge watching and, like, you know, egging her on and, you know, there's no one to pick her up. So she's just walking with her, you know, huge bag. Like, I imagine a huge bag. Um, and honestly, I think if you could do anything to make someone feel welcome, um, whether you just say hi, honestly, just saying hi at the rink to someone that you don't recognize means a lot and we do it a lot at my rink because you know we're we're a year-round rink in a city that is not full of year-round rinks um so just saying hi to someone and just being like oh hey you know what are you working on or even just making a compliment um it really does go a long way to making people feel included and if there's any way that you can you know advocate for people um who you know are, don't have a voice at the table um, at any point that you can, it doesn't even have to just be in skating. Like if there's, if you find something that's unjust and that, you know, you might be in a privileged position, you, you should go, um, you know, advocate for them because otherwise who is, you know? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I love that. And I'm just so thankful that you've been able to share your voice, um, continue to share your voice. I know you have a strong uh, support system. Everybody has been waiting for you to be on this IG live. I've seen all the reposts. Um, but <laughs> yeah, keep shining a light on Jada solo dance. <laughs> and anyone else out there that you see um, has something to say. I think it's really important that we support one another because uh, deep rooted messages and messages that go beyond the surface are what is meaningful to me because I can post so many different types of skating videos and all that stuff. And I know that I'm making a change in that realm. Right. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about an issue that is going to affect so many people's lives, if we actually work together to make things shift, then I'm going to say something. And that's why I've been using my platform in that way. So I think that the more that we develop these type of conversations, normalize these type of conversations, the more change that can happen. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I would honestly, I want to just have like weekly conversations about this with everybody. That'd be cool. You know, also any of my followers who want to like, you know, have a weekly live, let me know. DM me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love honestly, it. Honestly, like. People, if, if anyone who knows me for even a little bit amount knows I'm so obnoxious about like wanting better for everyone. I want everyone to have an equal opportunity. And this is just like one of those things that I'm like, oh my God, this is so annoying. How can I be a part of this community and not want like more for other people, you know? Um, so it's, it's kind of just within my brand at this point to be like, no, things need to change. We need to figure out a way to change them. And I want everybody to do their homework because otherwise nothing's going to change. Yeah, <sighs> of course. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again. Do you have any last words that you want to share with the audience? 
Um, honestly, everyone, just think about what you can do to make someone's day. Um, I see a question in the comments. I don't know if that's for me or not. I'm 24. Um, yeah, I just think about something that maybe would make you happy and then do that to someone else. We just want to perpetuate kindness and inclusion. That's really all we want ever. Um, so if you can just like be selfless for maybe a minute a day and, you know, make someone's day, I think that'll, that'll really change the world. If that, you know, that sounds corny, but I, I do mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually do believe it too just with what you said just being kind and saying sending a message honestly like dms or messages or comments that are of the positive realm make a world of the difference because this sport is already so competitive i'm gonna be real this sport is competitive. It's cutthroat. There's a lot of negativity that is involved in the behind the scenes that people don't see on Instagram. And the reason as to why, like Jada and I are really passionate about talking about positive things, posting positive things is so that we can exude this and have it touch other people so they can start incorporating that type of vibe into their life. Um, it's so funny because I think when people see me and I, you can, you can let me know if this is the same of you too. But when people see my Instagram, they think that I've never received like a negative comment ever, or like they're shocked when I tell them like I have haters and I'm like, Oh yeah, they're really prevalent. Like it's, it's just something that is, is going to happen regardless when you're doing something good, you'll have haters. When you are putting yourself out there, you will have haters, but I think it's so interesting when I look at certain comments and I'm like, this is exactly why I don't, don't, don't like certain parts of this gaming community. And it's, it's like, it goes against everything that I believe in. And for somebody to put somebody down about their technique, put somebody down for their teaching style, put somebody, somebody down because they're, they're, it, it, it's so nitpicky that jump is cheated, blah, 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 blah. What? It's okay. Mm. We leave it up to the judges. Mm. You do not need to write that <laughs> in the comments. I am not going to um, support that in any way, shape or form. You can go do that on another profile. Um, mm -hmm. This is, we're here to uplift. We're here to spread positivity. So yeah, I just was curious. Do you deal with any of that hate or what do you see? You know, I feel like in the beginning, I I dealt with like, you know, as like a beginner skater, you don't have the best technique. Um, I definitely did notice some of that in, in my space, but I really have been trying my hardest to, to make sure that, you know, no one has negative comments because like, honestly, go write that in a journal, go write that on Reddit. Don't, like, don't bring that here. We don't need that kind of negativity. So when you're saying like, Oh, like that was on an inside edge and it's supposed to be on an outside edge. But like that's yucking someone's yum at that point. And like if someone's excited about a breakthrough and a skill, who cares if it's not proper? If it's not like if it's going like, to give you negative points on and, like, in your competition, like I, like I really don't care because like competition and, and testing and all that stuff is all like an accessory in adult skating, like, you know, we're not going to get a, you know, a million dollars in sponsorships from, from our <laughs> skating, you know, we're doing this fun. And, you know, we really have to just make sure that we, we keep that kind of energy. So like at this point, I think everyone on my page knows that we, it's really about uplifting. It's really about, you know, yaying all of our successes people you know i i send hearts and congratulatories for everybody's successes if someone finally landed their axle after like three years i'm right there being their biggest cheerleader like i you know we need um we we need that those cheerleaders in our lives and so at this point i don't really deal with the negative comments there might be a couple here or there but i feel like if anything it's on other people's platforms and i and i'm like again i'm annoying there like hey no that's not nice and then mm, good for I, you 
<laughs> there you go again, using your voice. I love it. I love it. I love it. So standing up like, for what's wrong. So this is person that keeps messaging me. I'm like, well, stop being a jerk. Okay. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So at the end of the day, just like Jada said, we're here to spread positivity. So the one piece of advice that we have um, to give to you is just to spread kindness. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And in this sport that's already so, so judgmental, let's yeah. shift it. Let's turn yes. it upside down. Include people of all colors in your discussions. In- include people of different shapes and sizes in your discussions. And yep. really think about, you know, there's so many different types of ways to provide inclusion in skating. Um, even, you know, remember our conversation with Sharita, she was talking about the Special Olympics and how she's the only, I think she's the only black representative in the Special Olympics. And yep. that is so profound. And yep. so when you can find ways to give back, um, you know, at our Oakland Ice Center, we have a special skaters uh, Friday night session. And mm. we love uh, Coach Denise and um, Coach Wendy, who have definitely pushed that forward. And I think it's really important that we highlight every type of skater in this sport. There's no reason as to why people can't be able to have that same type of freedom when we are flying out there on the ice, <laughs> you know? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Jada. I really appreciate it. I, you know, I hope we continue to have these kinds of conversations. I love the fact that you're doing this series. I am happy for all the new things that have come out of this movement in the skating world. And I really do hope that we build some momentum so that, you know, it doesn't just, it doesn't stop here. You know, like we want to see, like, this is for change. And so hopefully that we do get to see some change soon. But, you know, thank you so much, Michelle, for having me and, um, it's been great and hopefully we can keep the discussion moving along. Beautiful. I appreciate <laughs> you so, so much. Okay. Bye girl. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye guys. <laughs>